Welcome to part two of three in our Gilman pre-departure series on the stages of culture shock. Studying abroad means making big changes in your daily life, and generations of students have found that they go through a predictable series of stages as they adjust to living abroad. To help visualize these stages, we like to use the U-curve of cultural adaptation or the culture shock curve. The culture shock curve generally moves through four different stages, honeymoon, frustration or culture shock, adjustment, and acceptance or adaption. While individuals experience these stages differently, an impact in the order of each stage varies widely, it does provide a guideline of how we adapt and cope with new cultures. The first stage you tend to go through upon arriving in your new country is the excitement or honeymoon stage. The first stage of culture shock is often overwhelmingly positive during which you become infatuated with the language, people, and food in your new surroundings. At this stage, the trip or move seems like the greatest decision ever made. The honeymoon stage starts to fade and you become more involved in activities and get to know the people around you, and differences rather than similarities will become increasingly apparent to you. Frustration may be the most difficult stage of culture shock and is probably familiar to anyone who has lived abroad or who travels frequently. At this stage, The fatigue of not understanding gestures, signs, and the language sets in and miscommunications may be happening frequently. Small things, like losing keys or missing your bus, may trigger trigger frustration. And while frustration comes and goes, it's a natural reaction for people spending extended time in a new country. Bouts of depression or homesickness and feelings of longing to go home where things are familiar and comfortable are all common during this stage. Common reactions to or symptoms of culture shock that you want to look out for include a desire to avoid social settings, physical complaints and sleeping difficulties, difficulty with your coursework and an inability to concentrate, a loss of your sense of humor, boredom or fatigue, a hostility towards your host culture, and becoming angry over minor irritations and significant nervousness or exhaustion. Students are sometimes unaware of the fact that they are experiencing culture shock when these symptoms occur. There are ways to deal with this period of culture shock, so it helps to recognize that culture shock may lie behind physical symptoms and irritability. Frustrations are often subdued as you begin to feel more familiar and comfortable with the culture, people, and food, and the languages of your new environment. Navigation becomes easier, friends and communities of support are established, and details of local languages may become more recognizable during this adjustment stage. Generally, though sometimes weeks or months after wrestling with the emotional stages that we've just outlined above, the final stage of culture shock is adaption or acceptance. This stage doesn't mean that your new culture environment is completely understood. Rather, it signifies a realization that complete understanding is not necessary to function and thrive in your new surroundings. You do, however, feel more at home, and what was once a challenge for you no longer affects you in a negative way. Though it can be one of the hardest parts of traveling, culture shock is just as integral to the experience as food, people, and scenery. By recognizing it for what it is and finding ways to cope, you can prevent culture shock from ruining an otherwise fantastic experience abroad.